É esse aqui o gameplay? Very promising. A denúncia do emulador ilegal de Nintendo Switch e o Zoo foi vista pela Nintendo? Foram multados em 2 milhões de dólares e tiveram que encerrar as atividades. Bilada. É... É esse aqui? Não posso ver esse aqui não? Gameplay Details? Esse aqui tem gameplay, pô. Esse aqui não tem. Tá, vamos ver o trailer primeiro então. Vamos lá. Nossa, mano. Esse é exclusivo do PlayStation? Parece, né? É exclusivo, né? Aí, tá maneiro. Arrakis is a test. Few survive it. Aí, a, difer a diferença... Da Unreal 5 aqui já, já vem com as texturinhas melhor, né? Os assetzinhos melhor de fábrica. <risos> Eu jogava um jogo que eu nem sabia que era desse universo. O nome era Dune. Dune 2. Eu jogava isso no PC. Caraca, o cara tá segurando aonde, filho? Já, não, já deu pra perceber que o boneco é você que faz, né? Já deu pra perceber que o boneco é você que faz e ele não fala, provavelmente. Aí, é o boneco que tu faz aí, a cara dele. E olha, olha, ó, tô sentindo que isso aí é o Helldivers, hein? Construção, ih, fudeu. É o Divers com construção. É MMO? Meu Deus. Is a test. É uma mulher que vai matar o cara, vai. Sweet Baby. But the humans that do. Ah, não, é um homem. Awaken. Quando que vai sair? Ah, vai sair pro X também, ó. Então é ruim, né? Eu não entendi porque que o jogo ficou ruim vai sair pro X, é foda. Vamos ver isso aqui. Dune Awakening gameplay was shown for the first time last night and on initial impressions based on what they demonstrated. Ah, tá bonito, cara. Olha a diferença. Olha a diferença de dos caras usar Unreal 5. Olha a iluminação, como é que já tá bem melhor, né? Today, I'm going to tell you all about what's going on here to get you up to speed and see if it's a game worth keeping an eye on. PVE, PVP, guns, vehicles, explosions, base building, could be something cooking here. Of course, Dune 2 has just released in cinemas worldwide to glowing reviews, and it turns out that Timothy Chalamet from Call of Duty is actually a great actor. Who would have thought it? But right now, we're here. É, o cara que é o ator mesmo. About Dune Awakening. So, let's Ou é só a cara dele. Now, this is primarily an open world survival game set in the Dune universe, and it's being created by the same developers that brought us the Conan Exiles MMO Funcom. As you may expect, you start on Arrakis, which is a harsh desert planet located on the far edge of the old Imperium in the Canopus star system. The planet is made up mostly of a vast desert, and that's why it's informally called Dune. If the harsh desert doesn't kill you though, then the colossal sandworms will. And they're certainly a sight to behold. It's essentially a tension mechanic in the game. These things can easily... Caraca, a gente viu esse filme na Nemo na época. Pô, horrível, cara. Surprisingly, surviving the planet itself is one of the Muito ruim mesmo, ainda tinha aquela zendaia. Watch out for dangers like the sandworms. You shouldn't be able to miss them. But you're also gonna have to fight dehydration. Arrakis has in 
intense sunlight and you're going to need to stay out of it using shadows during the day or by traveling at night. And to get water, you're going to have to visit the dew fields or eat plant fibers that contain traces of water needed for your survival. Apparently, if you're very desperate, you can even shoot enemies and take their blood and drink that as a source of hydration. Sounds lovely. Arrakis water. Caramba, olha o cabelo. Olha o cabelo, que maneiro. Olha a textura da malha ali da roupa dele. É só no vídeo. How to extract water from bodies and use water discipline by Quando vai ver 15 quadros. Vou botar aqui a tradução. Maintaining your still suit. And then you've got to choose where to craft and deploy a shelter that can survive both the sun, enemy combatants and the sandworms. And there is a shield wall on a rock. Aí tu vê aquela textura lá do personagem, tu chega aqui, olha isso aqui. Caralho, todo liso o boneco. Okay, and that's considered a safe area, but you can build temporary outposts beyond the wall. And we saw some examples of the building in the trailer and it looks vast. The system is based on the one from Conan Exiles, but expanded upon with an emphasis on player sharing blueprints. In fact, this is a big feature and I think it's pretty cool. Once a player has built their base, they can save the entire thing as a blueprint and sell it to other players. Not only that, but the new system has a co-op building mode, meaning that if you're building with friends, you can place down elements as holograms. God, I coisas, as coisas, olha, olha a iluminação como é que fica maneiro, as coisas estão tão bizarras, que eu acho que as empresas, ela, elas talvez a maioria delas não tenha mais porque lançar um jogo single player, se você pode lançar um jogo multiplayer e ficar farmando em cima desse jogo durante muito tempo né, porque você pensa assim, pô, podia fazer um jogo single player, mas single player o cara zera uma vez e não faz mais nada no jogo, a não ser que seja tarado e vá platinar, porque tipo assim, será que esse jogo aqui é multiplayer vai ficar bacana. O problema dos jogos multiplayer é que eles são todos ruins. There are definitely some user-friendly improvements to the old system. Crafting, well, that's another element of the game. Ah lá, algumas, alguns lugares estão bonitos, né? Outros estão feios. Vehicles, attachments, mods. Eu acho que quando aparece feio é porque é do X. Eu acho. More. In fact, building tech is going to be super important here because as you advance your technology and your base, you're going to be able to advance your spice harvesting operation, which in turn will grant you wealth and power. This means you should expect to be collecting stone and various metals, as well as eventually forging steel. All of these will allow you to build bigger machines. What is spice though? Well, in the law of June, without getting too spoilery, it's a mystery substance or a drug that is connected to the huge sandworms in some way. It's called melons and known locally as spice. This isn't just any drug though. In fact, it's the most essential and valuable commodity in the universe because it makes safe travel and accurate interstellar travel possible. You'll be searching the desert for massive spice blows and then you can harvest them. After that, you can either sell the spice on the exchange or consume it to expand your potential at the cost of addiction. Just so you know, while the drug can be used for interstellar travel, it is very addictive when consumed and it will give you a longer lifespan, greater vitality, items in certain people, but withdrawal can be fatal. Now you can expect to come across some familiar faces in the game if you've been watching the movies or perhaps read the books. You'll meet characters from both as you progress your story and try to uncover the mystery that lies just beneath the surface of the sand. Speaking of which, you're going to encounter ancient underground ecology labs as well as deep canyons and of course, boundless rolling dunes. The desert is also ever-changing and that's a big part of the game. Cataclysmic Coriolis storms regularly alter the landscape and this can uncover new valuable resources as well as sweeping away player-built outposts. We'll get onto that in a bit. It's not all vast nothingness though, there are bustling villages to explore, and this is an open world game remember, so there's going to be plenty of interesting and unique locations to discover. So let's talk combat, the exciting stuff. When you build your identity, you're able to not only use the deep character creation tool to make your playable avatar, but you'll also be able to choose skills and abilities taught by specialists in the game, such as Mentats and Benny Gesserits. And while you'll be able to choose specific certain abilities when you choose your character, you won't be locked into playing a certain class, and you can mix and match abilities from different schools depending on your playstyle. Then when you're in the world, new abilities and skills. The developers said that the game wants you to be able to use something called combined arms, meaning you're able to utilize everything at your disposal from Holtzman gadgets to long-range firearms. The game will also include sci-fi weaponry such as las guns and shields. As well as that, melee combat, of course that will be very prominent here, and you'll be able to use other abilities taught by the great schools of the Imperium. 580 vai rodar isso, vai. Combat because they want players to have freedom to craft their own way to play. 
Beyond that, you're also able to combine infantry, ground and flying vehicles. You're going to get access to sand bikes too. These will be very helpful when crossing big areas of the desert, avoiding the sandworms. But the one that you really want to know about is the Ornithopter. Cara, tipo assim, é melhor que Helldivers. Aliás, as pessoas continuam jogando Helldivers ou já enjoaram? Tem um faction system as well. You'll become known by what you wear and what you do in the game. In fact, you'll want to create a guild and grow it into a house minor by allying yourself with one of the other great houses. Perhaps you want to Atreides or maybe House Harkonnen. The game wants or aims to bring players... É, esse aqui parece ser mais interessante que o Helldive. ...starting them off as a survivor in the desert, but then, throughout the game, progressing them into a high-ranking baron, if that's what you want to be. Controlling the spice and building your empire is the way to ultimate power. And it looks like you're going to need all of that power that you built up when it comes to... Bom, o cara vai repetir essa porra aqui até... I'm imagining... In. Wrapping things up, while everything about the game sounds promising so far, I'm glad to hear that... Aí, aí, como é que o cara faz a parada? Aqui, 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 entregou. Aqui, ó. Isn't in a rush to release é assim it. mesmo, filho. Olha lá. To release it. They've had plenty of betas and creative é uma foda. Bilos said that the team are planning to run more betas for the game for several months. And they plan on... Ah, isto foda-se. time, but he did say that they have no intentions of rushing the game out there and it will take as long as it takes before it's in its 1.0 release. Visually, I think the game looks nice, the environments in particular. And you guessed it, yes, it's running on Unreal Engine 5. 5.2 to be exact at the moment. So they've got some cool stuff with Lumen and the base building for accurate lighting and Nanite to the level of detail stuff. So they've got some really awesome looking vistas and rock formations in the distance and up close. Pois é, essas paradas tinham que estar no Final Fantasy já, né? Hold up too. As of right now, no release window, of course, as we just talked about. And the game will come out on PlayStation 5. PC and Xbox Series X and S. But definitely want to look out for if you're into this kind of survival game. Or maybe you're just a big fan of the Dune universe in general. It appears that with Dune Awakening, they're crafting a game that is taking a lot of the source material, implanting that into the gameplay, and visually, aesthetically, very similar to the new Dune movies. With that said, that's all for today, folks. Do let me know your thoughts down below. Eu não consigo, eu não consigo. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Por exemplo, eu não consigo entender como é que funciona um jogo de MMO. Um cara faz a, faz a missão, outro cara faz a mesma missão. Eu acho uma merda isso.